Welcome to our few minutes together on the Parsha. This week we have the privilege of completing Chumash Bamidbar, and at the end of the reading of this week's Parsha Masay, we're going to say Chazak Chazak, the Nishazek. The Jewish people need to be strong, strong, and seek greater inner strength. When we talk about the Parsha, we notice the travels of the Jewish people, and we notice the boundaries of the land, the land of Israel given to the Jewish people. Inserted in the middle is a section dealing with the Ari Miklot, the cities of refuge. Who goes to a city of refuge? As soon as someone does an act which results in the death of another human being, even if it was on purpose, or if it was done inadvertently, immediately this person has to run to the city of refuge and be protected there until the Beisdin decides was it purposeful or was it inadvertent. If it was purposeful, he of course is liable to the death penalty if there were witnesses. If not, then the champion of the murdered individual, the Goel Adam, has the right to take action. If it was inadvertent, he has to stay in the city of refuge for the duration of the life of the Kohen Gadol. Why, specifically for the duration of the life of the Kohen Gadol, is a subject that is discussed in detail in Masech de Makos, and if you have an opportunity, take a look at Perik Elohein Hagolin. But we're not going to focus on that. What I'd like to focus on is a particular sentence which needs an explanation. When describing the two types of murder that took place, the Torah tells us that we may not take kofer, we may not take atonement money for either the one who kills on purpose and let him off the hook, or for the one who kills inadvertently and not send him to the city of refuge. We can't take any atonement money from them at all. Why? So the Torah tells us why. You shall not flatter or hypocritize the land in which you are living because blood is what, the blood of innocence is what hypocritizes the land. But Moshe Feinstein, in his commentary on this verse, makes such a pithy observation and comment. All societies will tell you that they decry murder and that they say murder is wrong. But what is the justification for saying murder is wrong? What is their reasoning behind it? And how does that compare to the Torah's reasoning? So Moshe, in his own humble inimitable fashion states, if you look at the world at large, they will tell you, as Pirkeiovos tells us, that you have to pray for the peace of the Malchus, to pray for the peace of all governments, because otherwise man will swallow up another man. Governments recognize if murder is permitted, then their government will fall, the society will fall. And so the purpose of prohibiting murder has to do with the continuation of society. The Torah says something else. Of course, we don't want society to crumble. But the purpose of not killing is because the person in and of himself is extremely valuable. And the proof of this dichotomy between the world's view and the Jewish view based on the Torah is the tremendous amount of chashivas, of value, we place on each and every life, even a life that's hanging by a thread one can be Mechalal Shabbos for, even if Suffolk, if that life is hanging by a thread, you can be Mechalal Shabbos. And you can never take even a moment of life away from an individual for the sake of perhaps saving some money, making room in the hospital for another bed, or to put a person out of misery. The difference between them is that the person doesn't live for the society, but the Jewish view is that the society lives for the person and the individual. And therefore, if you take atonement money from the murderer who killed on purpose, what you've done is you've hypocritized the purpose of the land and you flattered the land in making it the utmost and most important when really it's man that's most important. And therefore, the Pesach says, Velo sachnifu es oretz. Should be noted that when we talk in our times today about the difference between the Jewish army and the way 
the IDF fights, trying to avoid civilian casualties, to recognize the utmost value of each and every life versus the enemy whose intent is to destroy as much life as possible for their own goals. That's why wars are fought in their terms, because their goals supersede the individual life and don't recognize the value of each individual life. The Torah is telling us, the most important thing is not to hypocritize the land, because the purpose of our being here on earth is mankind. He's the Hashivas, not your conquering of the land, not your ideologies. The purpose of all life is human life itself. What a message in Parshas Masai for our time, that the land must recognize the individualized value of each and every human life. Chazak, chazak, v'nis chazek. Have a wonderful Shabbos.